Yeah, so. you've got that story about you were you loved to hunt and fish and so on. You were you were paddling your canoe down this really wild river, yeah. and Tom, what happened? Well, then the river got a hold of me, <laughs> and I couldn't get out of it. The current was so strong. You flipped the canoe right over. Flipped the canoe, and in fact, the grace of God that made that made through of that. But I, I realized that current was carrying me. I could not do a thing against that current. It was so strong. It shouldn't have been on the river to start with. It was at flood stage, which wasn't a real smart idea. But I finally found a branch somewhere that I could grab hold of and it swung me around onto the bank. But that's exactly the way it is. When we think we can do it, we get sucked into the current of the flesh and the flesh pulls us right under and frustrates us to no end. For instance, I have people say, well, I don't believe that, Wayne. I believe you can do it. Really? God commands us to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Any takers? <laughs> I'm not raising my hand. Only He lives within us to enable everything He demands from us. That's the good news. That's the beauty of the gospel. It didn't just stop at salvation. It started. Christ comes to live in us. He is our eternal life. He is our life. And that's what people need to understand. The same way you received Him, same way you walk Him. Just trust Him. But don't trust the flesh because it will suck you under and there's a real devastation in front of you. What's the next part of the verse? Well, he says, be done away with so that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And that's the whole problem. We're slavery not by choice as much as by default when we choose not to say yes to Christ. We're automatically slaves to sin at that point. Self comes in. The middle letter of the word sin to me identifies it. It's I. The middle letter of the word pride. I. When I get into the picture, I'm going to mess it up royally. Wayne, talk more about this thing is that when we were saved, Christ put us in neutral. Otherwise, we were in drive going with our passions and our lusts and our desires. Okay, We had no power over that, but He's put us in neutral, so now He's given us a choice. Mm -hmm. He's taken us out of the river. The river's still roaring. We yeah. step back in. Boy, boom, we're gone again. Talk a little bit more about that. Okay, well, you know, I think Paul helps us to understand that when he says in Galatians 5, 16, but I say, and he's talking to him very pointedly, walk by the Spirit. Now, that's a choice. That's a choice we have to make. By means according to. Whatever the Spirit, the Spirit, Spirit works according to the Word. So as we're willing to submit to Christ, submit to His Word, we walk by the Spirit, he says, uh, and you, we will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Uh-oh. So we still have the desire of the flesh. He's speaking to believers, not speaking to lost people. Then he says, For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, for those are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. And that really is in the present tense, keep on doing the things that you please. In other words, it's a dead-end street. When I choose Wayne over Christ in my life, Anything he, he, he demands me to do, He lives within me to enable, to enable me. And the pro problem is, I think so many of us don't realize how deceiving the desires of the flesh are. 